petition, Ms. Irwin's petition to establish paternity as well as the parenting plan. Uh, however, a couple of days after we were here last time, I believe Ms. Coran filed an order of protection, at least the emergency was granted. Um, as far as proceeding, I'm not sure if she's represented by counsel, but I would think that we will probably need to hear her her right. proof first. That may dispense with the matter if the court decides to grant that order of protection. Well, so the order of protection that you that was obtained was against your client, Mr. Irwin. It was, Your Honor. All right. Then, uh, Ms. Curran, are you? still in a position where you want to go forward on your petition for order protection? Yes, sir. All right, then we'll hear that first. Have a seat. You have witnesses, you're representing yourself, correct? Yes. All right. You are the petitioner, so this is a uh, hearing to determine whether or not there should or should not be an order of protection issued in this case. If you're going to testify, you need to come forward and uh, let the clerk place you under oath. Come on. Come right around here. You said it's, you know, you just have a seat. Well, actually, we're going to have to have you come move over here, please. I don't know why that hasn't been moved back. All right, you are the petitioner in this case, so it's your incumbent upon you to tell me what, if anything, you wish to do regarding this case. So. Yes, sir. Why do you feel like you need an order of protection? So it, it, most of it goes back from the past when we were together. Um, and the whole reason I left him when I was pregnant with my son, our son, um, there was a lot of abuse and drug use on his part. Um, a lot of, every time I tried to leave, he would try to stop me. So eventually I just loaded up my van with my kids, left everything behind, pictures on the wall, my name in the bills, everything. Went up to the gas station, told him I was going to the gas station, but really I had plans to go somewhere else to stay with my daughter's aunt for a while until I could get back on my feet. Um, so I told him I was going to the gas station and I just left. And I, and I didn't call the cops and I didn't call for help or go to a shelter, a women's abuse shelter, shelter or anything like that because the position we was in, I was afraid. I was afraid that they would find that he was doing drugs and stuff and all the things that were going on and me not knowing what I was gonna do with all my kids because I was pregnant with my fifth kid. Um, me not knowing what I was gonna do, I was afraid that they would try to take my kids from me. So I just, left and I didn't think I'd ever have to deal with him again because he didn't really seem like he was good with kids anyway he abused my kids um so I have pictures and stuff I sent and I wrote it down what had happened that's the past though today he comes back in my life after about three years um with his sister telling me he's changed that he's sober now he got out of jail. He's he's a felon, a violent felon. Um, but he did seem different, and he does seem different. But in my gut, I'm just I'm afraid. And so, but I did allow my son to go see him because under the that his sister would be watching there, watching them. He would not be able to take my son anywhere alone. So I did allow that for a little while. But my son came home. He was always angry. He was always saying out of the way things. Um, so after I did this order of protection, um, it took a couple times of me being able to leave him at school before he stopped freaking out, thinking I was going to leave him and never come back. And the lady asked him one time, uh, the lady who was watching him, Asked him, why do you think your mom's never we coming back? So we have an objection. Sorry. You cannot repeat what someone else has said. Okay. So you can only repeat what you yourself okay. have discussed with the defendant. Sure. Okay. Well, he's also told me that his aunt Shell told him that mommy was never coming back. You will never see your mommy again. 
the officer who even I had to call the police, um, even in the report, I also put that in the folder, um, also said, and I know I can't repeat, but um, that they was not, they did not feel comfortable bringing him back home to me. I had a deal, I had a past DCS inspection, um, welfare checks, everything. They just, they meaning him and his sister. So she abused my trust. So I just wanted to just stop the visits. And ever since I did that, Clay has been so much better. He is in school now. Um, he's finally not crying when I leave. He knows I'm coming back for him. Um, he's starting to go to the potty like he's supposed to. He, um, he's doing really good. And I would really like it to stay this way because like I said, I've already tried to be civil and it did not go well. And he, I know he probably hasn't abused him, but they're still in the back of my mind. What, like, I don't want that to happen to him, what happened to my other children. So I want you to understand that <clears throat> anyone who brings an order, a petition for an order of protection, I have to determine whether there is a present. Uh, yes, sir. A present danger of, of domestic abuse. And what I'm understanding from you is, is that the abuse you've talked about was back in 2019, roughly. That's mm -hmm. what you set forth in your petition. Yes. And then he's come back into your life after a couple of years. What has happened in the last recently that would cause you to fear that uh, you are say that you are the victim of domestic violence? Just the harassment between him and his sister. Um, and you say harassment because they're saying they're telling you he's a he's a changed man and he wants to see his children. No. Okay. Um, the threats, trying to make like belittle me. The it's kind of hard, but like he was very manipulative and belittled me, and made me feel like I had to do things when we were together. And I see it, the patterns coming back, like just to con like the control. And his sister has the same problem. Um, I I don't know if you're going to do this or not, but I just feel like there's going to be another case in front of you if you do, because I. It's a matter of time before he does it. There's also the same sister who's here fighting for him today is the same sister that said all that stuff about him before. Just last year, whenever I told her that I didn't feel comfortable with him being alone with Clay. All right, so harassment is your basic uh, reason that you brought this petition. Is I'm just trying to stop it. I should have got an order of protection. I understand I should have got one back then. I was afraid because I was no position to get the police involved or anything because I had nowhere to go. I didn't know what I was doing. I just had to get away. All right. Is there anything else that you want to tell me about your reasons why you want to have an order of protection issued? Not really, because ever ever since you granted this temporary order of protection, uh, there's been no communication. Uh, things have gotten better. But I'm just afraid it's going to go back. If Mr. You... Irwin's lawyer has an opportunity now to ask you questions about uh, this petition, so okay, uh, Irwin, Mr. Henson. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Smith, and I apologize on the side of that go Curran or Curran. Which one is it? Curran. Curran. Okay, Ms. Curran, isn't it true that part of the reason that you agreed to start letting Mr. Irwin back into his life is because you agreed that he had battled his drug addiction and he was better? Partly. Okay. And I agreed because I trusted Michelle, his sister to be a supervisor of the visits. What proof do you have, other than your word, what, what proof do you have that this man's a felon? Um, I have no proof, but you can look that up. Now, isn't it true that when you allowed, you say you allowed, when Mr. Irwin came back into the child's life, um, you accept his child support? Yes, he's for, um, enforced fact, to he's, pay child support. He's current on his child support. He's enforced to pay child support. But he's paying child support. Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that you've also accepted money from his sister? 
Yes, a couple times okay. she's offered and is to it help. True that you asked for money from his sister. Yes, because she told me I could. And isn't it true that this past Father's Day you had no problem with uh, Mr. Irwin seeing him on Father's Day? Yes, because I tried. I did. And isn't it true that you reached out to the family? I think this was sister, but you reached out and said, hey, you guys are back from vacation. Uh, do you want to see Clay? Mm hmm. Little did I know they were manipulating me. And isn't it true that this child is three years old? Yes. Okay. Isn't it true that you also said that this child, you told them that this child is fascinating, fascinated with superheroes? And yes. that he on his own has acted out since he was two, but he on his own has acted out in different ways or before Mr. Irwin got involved. And you said the way you take care of this is you tell him that Batman wouldn't do what you're doing. Not exactly. Clay was a sweetheart. Up in, I just had another baby recently. Um, she's four months old now. And you know how toddlers act whenever there's another baby brought. They kind of you know, but he's actually doing really good with him now. So no, that's not true. You might reward that. Okay. Isn't it true that uh, Clay, one of the problems you had in his anger before Mr. Irwin really got involved, Clay would abuse cats? No, sir. That happened after he saw his father. And Clay has abused cats uh, and you've reached out to them. You have no clue what's going on and that he lies. That also happened after his father. I told okay, her there's sir. been a lot of changes ever since you guys have been in Clay's life. And so you're really not scared of Mr. Irwin, though, are you? Yeah, I am. You are? Yes, I don't even want to be in this situation. Okay. Well, if you're scared of Mr. Irwin... It's Judge, easier I'm for me to text to, him. If I can ask the question, mm -hmm. please. Judge, uh, and I'm going to this petition for the order of protection she filed. And we get past the narrative and we get to where it says other, other or isn't true. You said, if I have to let Brian see Clay, I have supervised visits by myself or law enforcement. Law enforcement would be preferred. Actually. Yes, that's true. And, and you listed yourself first, mm -hmm. correct? So you're scared of this man, but you want to supervise the visit. I wouldn't be alone. You're scared? You did not write anybody else in here, did you? It doesn't matter. I would not be alone. You did not? Would you agree with me that when you and I left this courtroom last time... You yelled at my face talked, like abuse, just like he does. Well, how did I do that, ma'am? I'd love to know that because actually I'm going to call this man as a witness if I need to to show you that you're wrong on that. Oh, you could do that. So how did I do that? What did I yell? And you also told me that it's whoa, your whoa, job. Whoa, 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 you made an accusation in front of this judge about You yelled about right here in the middle of the courtroom, actually, whenever we went on break. I yelled in the middle of You the yelled at me. What did I yell, and who were your witnesses for that? He did witness that. What did I yell, and who are your witnesses for that there's courtroom security that day have you subpoenaed anybody for that i don't know if you've ever been the lawyer for an abuse case i know that you have um led a lot of people i'm sorry asking the questions here. i have not subpoenaed nobody no okay because i'm well, letting I'm god take care of this he's person. stronger than you ma'am i'm going to ask you for the third time what did i yell and who you again raised? i've been abused so Whenever a man raises his voice at me, I don't hear what they're saying. Okay, so but I do know you uh, yelled at me. So once again, you said uh, supervised visits by myself. Now let's go to the report that you filed with that with the Dixon Police Department. And it says, uh, this was filed by Patrolman Colin Floyd, badge number 235. <laughs> And your name is M Micah. Micah. Okay. Mm -hmm. According to this report, and this was July 13th, 2023, 
Micah stated that she had no problems communicating with Brian. Micah was advised how to obtain an order of protection on the scene. Micah was also advised the other thing, uh, how to block all forms of communication between her and Michelle. So did you lie to Officer Floyd? And I apologize, I'm not from Dixon. Did you lie to Officer Floyd in that? Not really, but they already had my son, and well, I don't, I don't that, like I'm, drama. I'm asking you. Okay, so explain how you not really. Now, you're telling this judge, and you've told me under oath that you're scared of it. Yet, in your own petition, you want to supervise. What's true or false, that's the same thing that you told me. I've got no problem with Brian. I have a problem with his sister. And I would be happy for him to see him as long as I can supervise. Is that not true? I do not want him to be alone with my son. Is that not what you told me? I have said that in the past. But you like I said, I was being civil. I was trying. Now that they have not been in my son's life, he is doing so good. And what's if, your proof of that? What's my proof of that? Yes. Call the school. Call DCS. Because since they wanted to call DCS on me and try to say something that wasn't true okay that's fine ma'am has a uh, you can call the all those people he's doing you, really good ma'am have you subpoenaed any of those people here today what proof do you have no that? so if we come down to this what this comes down to is basically you're fine as long as, by the way how many kids do you have you brought that up that is not something that you just like her i have six Big deal. I love all my kids. And out of those six children, how many different fathers? It does not matter. Judge, I'm going somewhere with this. I have six. Okay. And I've been in several abusive relationships. And out of those six children, those six fathers, how many fathers have primary custody of kids? None of them. One of them doesn't? Um, me, if you're talking about Brayden, we co-parent my son. How many of those? I have him one week. He has him the other week. He's not a threat. How many of those other fathers pay child support? None of them. So the only father that's paying child support is Mr. Irwin. And you can cut that off if that's the problem. He can keep his money. Ma'am, would you answer my question? Yes, because it's enforced. And isn't it true that we, you had no problem with this family? You have asked for money on a regular basis. No. You have asked, you have asked them if they wanted to come to get clay. You had yes. no problem at all with this family until they had concerns about the child safety and they cut the money off. No, the money is not cut off. It's enforced. I'm talking about the extra money once they refuse to stop giving you any extra money. She literally gave me gas money to meet her three times. Three times. So you were so scared of all this abuse that you had no problem with Mr. Irvin and his sister taking Clay on trips? No, they did not. Actually, the one time that Clay has gone anywhere outside of where they live, that I know of is when I said, okay, under one condition, you can take my daughter with you. My oldest daughter came back and she told me a bunch of things. I had your someone watching him. How old is your oldest daughter? She's 11. Is your oldest daughter here today? She's not. Okay. So if we go for the timeline of the events, and incorporating what you have here. We were fine in spring, as long as it was under your control and you gave permission, we were fine in spring. We were fine in summer. We were fine when we were getting money. We were fine when uh, taking trips. All of this was fine until Mr. Irwin files to be declared the legal father DCS is called because 
his sister has some legitimate concerns, then suddenly Lies. and the money cut off, and then and that's when it ended. That's when we had to have a problem. Correct? No. And you are fined according to what you swore to under oath. You're fined as long as he visits at your house and you told the officer in a, a report that he gave, that you gave, that you were fined with Brian. It was his sister. And that's July the 3rd. Back in July. Back in July. Ma'am? Back in July. But when yes. my son came back that day, I was not fine. Because the things that my son told me is he, and then the way he reacted when I took him to the babysitter the last time I came to court, it was terrible. He's three and he's running down the street. Mommy, don't leave me. Mommy, don't leave me. The babysitter said he was shaking. Go ahead. Can't okay. testify about what someone else is doing. Okay. Told well, baby, did you bring the babysitter today? No. So what we have is testimony from you, or at least what you swore to under oath in this, what you told a lawyer that, I mean, excuse me, told a police officer that if you lie to the police officer, you could be charged with a felony. Mm -hmm. We have those in your words saying, Brian's fine. As long as I supervise him, or problems with the sister, you testified to this judge that the stuff happened two years ago. All of these other things, but you got no proof. Do you want to know what the lawyer told me whenever I asked for no, a lawyer? That's all my questions. You can't use two months back. A lot happens between now and then. Anything else you want to tell me? No. Right, thank you. You may have a seat. You said that that table was full. Before we get any further, do you have any other witnesses that you intend to call? No, sir. Oh, now you go. Sorry about that, Judge. Um, Judge, I would submit that she's not uh, met the burden of proof. Uh, her own words, under oath, in this order of protection she filed, and her testimony today, the events of two years ago, this was before, uh, Mr. It was back when Mr. Irvin had a problem. She testified that yes, he did get better. She led him back into the life. She testified, she told the police officer that she had no problem with Mr. Irwin. It was simply his sister. Uh, she offered no proof of harassment. She's offered no witnesses to come forward. All we have is a testimony of Someone um, when things didn't get going well for her yeah. uh, and didn't go the way she wanted them to, then she was no longer going to be in complete control. Decided to, in our opinion, abuse in order of protection. But we submit that she's not met the burden of proof that's required for an order of protection. We ask you to dismiss this order. I mean, you can come to the podium if you want. Um, he said he would witness. He has been there through this whole thing. He's brought me here. Um, he's witnessed a lot. Who is he? Um, Barry Deal. Okay. What, what relation is he to you? He's or? become like family to us. He's <clears throat> been in our life um, before brian had showed up and now even still well i asked you a moment ago if you had any other witnesses i know i'm, I'm sorry i just didn't want just to give speak. me some advice i'm sorry when the judge is talking you just stay sorry quiet, okay? uh, a moment ago i asked if you had any other witnesses and you indicated you did not so you're now saying you have a witness that you want to call yes i didn't want to speak for him but he's he said right. it's fine what's his name barry deal Mr. Gill, come up. Judge, I'm going to object to any witnesses uh, put on, not just the, because she's asking after a proof closed. But had she told me and let on that she had a witness, I would have called for the rule. He said in, he's heard what questions I've asked her. No, there's nothing that says she can't call a witness. There's no rule that's been requested. The fact that you had a conversation with her and she indicated where the witnesses does not prohibit no, no, it from no, it. Judge, she asked you. Pardon? You asked if she had any witnesses. <clears throat> Well, I'm going to allow this witness to testify. So come up, Mr. Gill. Thank you. 
You stay at the podium. You're going to see he's your witness. You come around here. Sir, if you'll come around here, I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand and be placed under oath. Sure. Have a seat. He is your witness. So you can ask him non-leading questions. You can ask him a question if you want to. He can't just get up here and testify and say whatever he wants. This is a question and answer format. You have to ask questions. Okay. Um, you can't ask him. Pardon? You can't ask him questions. Nope. This is your case. You have to put him on and ask questions you want. Those questions have to directly relate to your petition for order protection and the basis for it that you're claiming that you have. I don't, I don't know what to ask you. Right, Mr. Gill, step down. I'm sorry. That's all right. Mr. Gill, you can step down. She doesn't sorry, have any questions. Sorry, I don't even know what to ask. Should I just say what I've seen? Nope. You're being called as her witness. You can't just get up and volunteer a thing. Okay, what have you witnessed? Can I say that? For this case? I don't, I don't know. Ask him a question. If you're able to ask him a question, then you can ask the question. Ask the question. Okay. Um, since from the time that you've known us, um, when you first met Clay, um, how was his behavior? How did you see him? Because he had said that Clay was, I had said that Clay was unruly before he came along. How was Clay when you first met him? You know, I want you to move that microphone, that base of that microphone, you can move around if you need to. All righty. Well, <clears throat> I met uh, this family two weeks before Christmas this last year. Um, and I've got to know them very well. Uh, the six little kids, love them like they're my own. Clay, uh, he was a wild little fellow, but he's really gotten good here in the last week or two. Uh, he's doing real good at school. He's calmed down so much, it's unbelievable. Um, Now, as far as what I have seen and heard, pictures of her abuse where she was bruised up from supposedly his abuse, I can't blame her. I wouldn't want him around either. Uh, what did you actually see? Uh, she had pictures of where... You saw pictures from years before? Uh-huh. Um, I've been married 47 years and I've never laid a hand on my wife and I've got three kids. I've never whipped any of my kids except one time they, one, one daughter lied to me one time about a report card, but anyway, uh, all the kids are really good. Play has really come along in the last few weeks. Um, Now, as far as their relationship, she's told me that the sister at one time was scared of her brother being around the kids also. You can't repeat what somebody's told you, even if it was her telling you. Okay. And you can only testify about what you've actually observed. Right. Okay. Well... All I can tell you is that the little kid is doing a whole lot better than before. Now I can say back at Christmas time, uh, when I met him, I understood that he was coming to visit them and he was supposed to bring her some money and some diapers. 
He showed up to see the kid, from what I understood. Didn't bring her any money. Didn't bring her any diapers. Of course I did. I stepped in and I helped her. Uh, I don't know when a fella has a little child. It just seems like they need to take care of that child. Um, everybody in Dixon pretty much calls me Santa because I take care of all child, all children. I like to pass out toys. I like to help people. Have you, uh, and you have any other questions to ask him? Um. I think that's all. I don't know. Right. Thank you. If you have a seat at the table, Mr. Henson, you may cross-examine. Mr. Your name again was Barry Deal. Deal? Deal, like, what a good deal. Good Barry Deal. Okay, Barry. Mr. Deal. Okay, so you got to know this family before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay. And... Mr. Irwin didn't start coming around until after Christmas, correct? It was shortly after that, it was after Christmas. Correct. Okay, and so when you met him, you met Clay, he was a wild little fella. He was. So he was a wild little fella before Mr. Irwin come around. Well, I never really met Mr. Irwin until now. But when you met him, but I'm you just him. told me that uh, you met him before Christmas, before Mr. Irwin come around, and so therefore, uh, little Clay was a wild little fella before Mr. Irvin come around, correct? He was. And these pictures of abuse, do you have any proof of that this abuse actually happened or is this just abuse that Ms. Coran said as far as Mr. Irwin to her? Uh, well, all I can do is look at a picture and hear the story and it makes sense to me. So the answer is no, you don't have any proof. Hey, if somebody took you out in the parking lot and beat you half to death, I, and I've seen a picture of it, all I could say is it looks like so, somebody beat you half to death. So, no, you don't know that that was Mr. Error, and you don't know that there was any abuse. You just have what she says. That's right. Okay. And, I believe and if you, you have any proof, well, let's talk about this. You know the family really well. You said... How many residences uh, Miss Corrin had since you got to know her? Two. You ever been in her house? I have. Multiple times? How many times a week? Once a week. Once a week. So you don't know what happens the other six days a week in that house? Uh. I pretty much see them every day. You don't know what happens in that house, do you? My point is, you're a family friend. You're like family to them, but true or false, you're not in that house with those kids every single day, and you cannot testify that Clay, how he is consistently, other than when he's around you, correct? He's around me. I know. But when he's not around you, you don't know, do you? How would you? Thank you, sir. Would you know? Thank you, sir. You may step down and have a seat in the courtroom. Thank you, sir. Or do you have any other witnesses? No, sir. Sorry. Again, same motion, Judge, to dismiss for the same reason. <clears throat> Ms. Curran, I want to explain to you the law in the state of Tennessee that provides for um, domestic abuse victims to apply for and obtain an ex parte order of protection. <clears throat> in order to obtain an order of protection, it is required that on an ex parte basis that there be proof of an immediate uh, threat of injury or, or domestic violence being inflicted upon a petitioner. When this was originally brought before, my, uh, before me to review, some time ago, there did not appear based on your petition to be an immediate threat of, it, of uh, 
harm or injury or domestic violence to be uh, that was set forth it is instead talking about constant drama and harassment lies and threats <clears throat> reading through your narrative it basically is that you're dissatisfied with how you've been treated by him and some of his family clearly the past being uh, a situation where if in fact those events took place in the past there's no excuse for that i certainly have no respect for anyone who abuses a woman but in the present situation in order to justify the the issuance of an order of protection in this case, it is necessary that I have to find that there is uh, proof of domestic violence of an immediate nature that has occurred. And I simply do not find that the evidence in this case rises to the level of domestic abuse that is, <clears throat> or the threat of domestic abuse that would justify the imposition of an order of <laughs> protection. Um, you had listed all of your children, not just the child that you have with him, as being uh, the recipients of that and his right to see those children or to see that one child is the only thing that's before the court. He has no legal right to see the other children. Um, so I am denying the order of protection that was sought and there are other means of obtaining protection in the form of, of a restraining order that can be issued by a domestic, violence, a domestic relations court. In other words, a restraining order that <clears throat> would restrain people from doing certain things, would restrain him from harassment, restrain people if there's found to be that, that need for it. So I want you to understand that just because an order of protection is denied does not mean that a court who hears your other, your case regarding the custody of the child or the visitation aspect cannot put out orders that would have the same effect as an order of protection. In other words, it is, uh, an order of protection is an extraordinary remedy this is the ordinary remedy that we have available in every divorce or, or child custody case. So based upon that, I'm denying your petition for an order of protection. Um, but now we are going to have to move to the uh, petition to establish residential time. Are you wanting to have a hearing on that today? Well, Judge, prior to this, I did. But um, Given what we feel has been a retaliatory action, and given what we feel there's proof out there of the condition of her home, and since we filed uh, this action months ago, um, what I would ask the court today is for leave to amend my pleadings and set a temporary visitation schedule of every other weekend, which is what the parties were utilizing on their own for a while with the exchange being between being at uh, well I'm not going to just unilaterally establish an or an alternate weekend visitation with her opposition if the two of you I'm going to take an afternoon recess and you can talk with her and see whether or not you two can come to an agreement otherwise we'll have to have a hearing if you're going to amend your petition if you want to have the hearing after you amend your petition I'll be certainly glad to reset it to allow you to do that. Are you planning on hiring a lawyer? I can't afford one, sorry. The law does not permit me to appoint an attorney to represent you in a case where a civil nature is such as this. So you would be required to represent yourself. <clears throat> um, you talk to your client, find out what you want to do. Obviously, there can be an agreement that, you know, if there's a sister that's creating a problem, uh, you know, an order, a court can order that she stay out of the situation. This is between you and Mr. Irwin. And there'll be no harassment, no retaliatory actions by either party. Um, and that would be my order if I have to hear it. It just becomes a question of how often he gets to see the child. Uh, he has a right as a father to see this child. Um, and whether the other men who have fathered the children with you see their children or pay child support is not a not really going to make much difference to me. It's going to be what is Mr. Irwin's situation and what is his right. And I'm going to take a recess before we go any further. You two can see what you can work out. We'll come back. If not, we'll have a hearing. Uh, Judge, may I ask, and I've never done this before, but in light of some accusations that were made on her testimony, may I have at least one court officer in here to witness this? You have a, you can discuss it right here in the courtroom as far as Thank I'm you. concerned. Thank you, Judge. Um, we're going to uh, take a recess at the moment. We'll stay at a recess for 15 minutes. All rise.
This court's now in recess for 15 minutes. I'm going out the hallway, so I'm not a witness. <laughs> I don't want y'all calling me. Why is the microphone over here instead of over here? It's not that big a deal. Or, uh, that's all right. We can leave it there if you need to. Just don't worry about it. It's going to be a big deal. Ordeal. It's just. I think the only reason it was there was we had a circuit uh, docket call and they had an assistant sitting over there. Hanson, what do you have to report? Judge, I believe we've reached a temporary agreement. Um, my client has uh, agreed, and Mr. Duran, that we've agreed my client will exercise visitation every other Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The meeting place will be at McDonald's in Dixon. Uh, my client will exercise that visitation in Dixon that his sister will not be there uh, and it's going to be uh, supervised by a Mr. Carmen Sharp and a Miss Callie Sharp and I can give the court just a little bit of background as to those individuals. Uh, they're both from Lewis County. Uh, Carmen Sharp is my client's best friend. Carmen and Miss Callie have both had an interesting story. It was kind of a success story. They both had their battles about eight or 10 years ago, about six, up to about six years ago, they had their battles with drugs. They both uh, overcame that. They are both gainfully employed, had been so, had been sober for, I think it's now four years. Um, I'm well aware of both of them. I watched Callie grow up and I watched, I've known Carmen since he was probably about 16 and I actually performed a wedding for them uh, this past, a first weekend in May. Uh, so they are people, I can assure the court that if they thought for one minute that my client was trying to abuse, or anyone was trying to abuse, or if they thought that he was... Uh, no, I'll approve that agreement, agreement, provided that we put in there that there'll be no harassment in the meantime, just that either, neither party will uh, engage in any sort of harassing conduct. Um, nor will either party uh, take any retaliatory action towards the other <clears throat> outside of the proper legal course, meaning that if there's an issue that arises, you don't have to file something here. You, you allege to be a victim of domestic abuse and you have no money to hire an attorney. There are agencies uh, that legal aid services in Clarksville, for example, sometimes are available to help people you need legal representation to protect your rights. But by the same token, he has every right to see his child, uh, as long as he does so in a way that complying with the court's orders and, the, and is appropriate in every way. Obviously, Mr. Henson <clears throat> is going to represent his client, and it sounds like he's got two supervisors who are good people that are going to you know, look out for your child's best interest. We'll try this on the basis. If there's a problem, we'll deal with it. But right now, I think this is the, the best uh, solution that we can have. I interrupted you, Mr. Henson, but it does sound like you have prior knowledge of these folks and that they are uh, appropriate for supervisors for the situation. Was there any other provision of the actual order that needed to be addressed? Only thing I was going to offer the court, and this is just a good faith uh, offer, but that this start on the 17th of September rather than uh, this Sunday. Right. I'd say we do it that way. That's also it's going to give me a chance to make sure if these two can't, we can find someone. All right. And that'll be the order of the court. I'm glad you were able to work something out. Hopefully things will go smoothly. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge.